lumber prices. Good morning. This is a free little update opinion about lumber prices. I'm Rich Possum for Critical Point. It is March 22nd, 2021. Now, this is a monthly chart of lumber futures. And if we scroll or compress time, we can see that it had a roller coaster back in the 70s, but pretty much range bound eventually. Then it moved to a higher level and more volatile, eventually set back. We can find some correlation to our economic, macroeconomic business cycles, such as for recessions and boom bust periods. Okay. Um, now, what I want to point out is from the model perspective, we have three types of long-term business cycles, and we can abbreviate those as LT1 and 2 and 3. We're going to discuss the smallest of those. It's a minor super cycle called the LT1. I call it a three-year cycle as well. Some people say it's more like four, and they relate it to what's called a kitchen cycle and even a presidential cycle, and you can look those things up online. Kitchen cycle was discovered on business inventory. And then over time, people learn to apply it to market prices and a variety of other macroeconomic indicators. I happen to believe the cycle's shorter than everyone believes, so I use my own label for it. Okay, so there was an LT1 top in May of 2018. Well, it turns out the global economy topped in 2018 and went into a recession 2018, 2019, and of course dropping in 2020 for an even more severe recession because of the virus recession. Okay, The U.S. lumber market was likely feeling less demand from an economy that was evolving towards a recession, but thanks to all the money printing, and Wall Street having faith in the money printing, it was really helping to support the, the economy so that it was difficult to see that we were on our way into a recession. Then the virus recession come in and slam dunked, okay? Then we go back to re this gigantic bull market in lumber prices. Now, why is that the case? Well, we had a de demand disruption early last year before the virus recession, okay? Demand just simply walked away and got scared, okay? And then it stabilized and began to realize that people, even though they were hurting an economy, some people were trying to build new homes. And some people, when they're, they even pull money out of the stock market during recessions, and then will go out and build a home or they'll buy a home. And the lumber market found itself in a supply disruption, it couldn't recover from that slump. It couldn't bring on board fast enough. However, there's some interesting stories out there as of this weekend. I believe New York Times had an article. I was unable to read it, but I read some comments about it. So maybe some little uh, citing and headline stuff. And it was basically saying that some lumber producers in this country, I think it was more in the South, which would make sense. It would be pine lumber, which is the one of the more well-known lumbers used in building a home, they were saying they were not seeing the demand. Some of them were even backed up and were discouraged that they were not benefiting from these higher prices. They were not getting it. The ones that are getting it are the lumber mills and the middleman and the broker dealers and merchants all the way to the stores are getting it. And it's probably helping the U.S. economy, but it's also hurting the consumer because they're paying what I think is an outrageous price to build a home now because I think this is a bit overdone on lumber prices. It is not necessary to have prices these high, this high. But fascinating to me that it's not really trickling back to the actual lumber producer the way I would have, would have thought. So the system, free market system isn't working that well. At any rate, we do have an impressive bull run. How much longer can this run last? Well, if we have faith in the LT1 cycle, the model is saying we should have seen an LT1 bull market and it could have been an, uh, over, it may be over as of last month, but it's allowed to extend perhaps into the end of the year. I'm showing no later in August, but we have some really low probability scenarios saying it may even take the end of the year. But it's saying it would be in rule violation for this cycle definition to be higher in January of next year and later. 
we would have to reevaluate. We would have to wonder. And let's face it, these are strange times right now. There's some unprecedented things going on. It's fascinating to me, however, how many markets actually behave the same way they've always behaved. It might be more high priced. It might be more low priced. They might be slower, or I'm sorry, faster paced than normal. But it still fits in the overall patterns and trends, and the model has just been working fine with many commodities and the overall stock market and economy. Okay, so my thoughts are we do want to be thinking in terms of peak demand relative to price, not necessarily volume, but relative price. We may be seeing peak demand, and what creates tops? Normally, it's the buyers who create tops. They refuse to pay even one tick higher, one penny higher. And prices start coming down from just a few sellers and that demand side backing off. Demand wanes. Later, you get more sellers, if it's a significant decline, and you get more bearish news. Do you know what? The pendulum is swinging the other way. We now have more supply than demand. So you don't get the bearish news right at the top. Uh, right at the top, it's probably the most bullish looking and the bulls are the most happy and they seem to think it's just going to go on forever and don't realize it's over. And many don't realize, that, that many will buy too soon on the way down. They don't realize it's rolling over for something bigger. The model is suggesting an LT1 bottom is due sometime next year on into 2023. Okay. And it's fascinating that I've learned on commodity indexes that commodities probably will be down next year. And I'm thinking inflation relative to commodities will probably be down now. The point is labor, however, may be rising. And so it's possible overall inflation hangs in there pretty good. It may just be rotating as to what's really driving it. But I'm thinking there could be even an easing back of inflation next year. So I think we can overdo it here and get too excited. I mean, my model is saying inflation is going higher next 15, 25 years. The same for interest rates. But we could be overdoing it and becoming too bullish on inflation and interest rates. And we also could be scaring ourselves, such as in the stock market, of making too big a deal of inflation and interest rates. I find in some individual commodities are likely to be down next year. And I think this is one of them. Okay. I also think maybe even the economy could perhaps throttle back a little bit, but basically it ought to do very well over the net, all the way into 2024, and it could just surge yet this year. Okay. Um, I see the stock market easing back next year, however, but I do see the stock market higher into next year. Okay. I think interest rates can ease back by next year, and I think interest rates top this year. So I see these other things coming into play here. That could be a sign to, yes, we can ease back this price push, this demand push on prices, ease it back. Even if we don't, we may even increase the volume uh, to help do that. But even if we don't increase the supply, the demand can start holding back. So how do you deal with this? Well, yeah, unfortunately, we do have to consider prices could move higher still okay, later this year, but it's probably topping out this year for this particular cycle. Now, uh, how much higher? Well, we have studies going all the way up to 1,200 even. If it takes out that record high, it can actually get up into around uh, 1130s, maybe on up to close to 1,200. I'm not so concerned of the accuracy of that. Uh, I'm more interested in this pattern and the true timing, which is about time. How long does it take to get to a point where demand's going to back away? A sign of demand could be backing away is a violation of this month's low at 776.10. That's the dollar price in the futures market for that for that lumber contract. So if we can see it take out this month's low, I think we got an opportunity. It works lower into next year. Now I'm not saying it's going to crash. <clears throat> it may be a struggle lower at times, but at the same time. You know, I look out the next year thinking, well, why wouldn't it return to 477? Okay. So, again, uh, the lumber market is really just a unique situation where it's making a big deal now of flipping from a demand disruption to a supply disruption. You add the two together and blame it on the buyer's recession. That has caused an unusual surge in demand. Fascinating to me, it just hasn't trickled all the way to the lumber producer. At any rate, that's my scenario on lumber prices. And even I'm interested in trying to build a new home here or shop for an old home, and I'm concerned of these higher prices. 
So uh, at any rate, uh, I thought I'd just put this out there. I haven't used lumber in my economic modeling for quite some time, but it does. I'm very convinced this decline in 2018 was picking up on the U.S. was evolving towards a recession. But it could also have been just too much supply in the lumber market. That's the same thing with copper. Copper is called Dr. Copper because they like to use it as a clue of the economy. Well, you have to be careful that sometimes it is just about copper. And copper does have a real supply issue here right now. I think they need 10 million tons more of copper. And they're saying, where's that coming from? Where are we going to build those mines? That's another story for another day. But I thought I would bring this into play here. Uh, something else to discuss with all our commodities, economic and stock market research. At any rate, put me down for now looking for a long-term top in, in lumber prices this year. Manage your risk relative to the analysis of others. And, of course, manage it relative to your own decision-making in the markets. And thank you for your time and consideration. And if you're not a subscriber, you want to go to criticalpoint.podbean.com. And that's bean as in soybeans, B-E-A-N. Thank you.